Okay, are you guys able to see my shared screen right now? Am I sharing screen? Does it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. So uh, I still have like, I still have like uh, twin motion stuck in my mind. So that's why like everything is on right now. It's got like the off, the uh, closed, uh, like curtains, open curtains and whatnot. Uh, so let me hide a couple of things. So in my curtain section, you don't have to do this, but I made it so that I can do the animation that you guys saw where there was, you know, closed curtains, open curtains, open uh uh, nano wall, closed nano walls. So I'll talk a little bit about this. So here's two versions of the curtain. There, here's the open version, uh, and then the closed version. Right? Open, close, open, close. I have both of them just so that I have it here, just in case I need it. But at the same time, we also I also have the windows, which have a closed version. Uh, sorry, I have a this is the open version, right, right here, where every all the all the windows are stacked to one side, and then I have a version where it is, you know, closed, right. So when you're looking at the plans, you're probably wondering how does this work, and this is where you will actually start to see some major uh, major differences between uh, people who drew the plans and actually understood the plans, <laughs> okay. Uh, so they drew it, but they didn't quite understand it. So I'll explain why. So let's go to, let me go to the top view real quick. And we can kind of look at this, right? Uh, there's a few things that aren't working uh, well, and you probably know it if you've modeled the, the, you know, the windows, right? Or the nano wall, I like to call it. Uh, it's actually a product. Nano walls are like these walls where you can move move them and like kind of like collapse them and open them and they're on rails so on this side it makes perfect sense because well the drawing isn't great but it makes enough sense so that uh, i can understand it so instead of having actually having a, a you know like a super thick block this is actually supposed to be two pieces right so you have a frame and then you have a piece of glass the glass this is probably too thick for a, for a piece of glass. So usually when you draw a piece of glass, it's just like a kind of a thin rectangle, right? Like something like this. And then, you know, like it's generally a line or something like that. And then you realize on this other side, hey, how come there's no frame on the other side? That that doesn't quite work, right? So you would have to, you know, copy something like this to the other side just so that to make it work, right? Um, However, I don't think things end usually like this because think about it. Um, here, let me just move this back into place. You know, like it, it can't just end right here like this. What, what's going on over here, right? Like you see how like there's nothing over here, right? Uh, here's the wall. Uh, let me see if I can change the color of that wall because it's just looking pretty hideous uh, on screen right now. So let's see. Is it this color? Yeah, it's this color. Let me just make it darker. There you go. So you can see it a little, little bit better. Oh, oops. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit cancel. There we go. So you see how there's nothing right here, right? There's nothing at this very end. Well, what it really needed was like a piece of glass right here, like this. But if you think about how a piece of glass exists, right? It needs like some a blocking at the very end, right? And since this is a movable panel, right? What's missing from the drawings is like the, you know, the lines below it where in which it sits on the rail, right? And if you don't know what I'm talking about uh, here, Go back to like looking at, I don't know if these are the best images in the world, but there's some images, right? So you can kind of look on, you know, you can kind of see it from the sky, like they're sitting on these rails, right? Uh, and you can see which rail, which part is thicker, right? So if you look very, very carefully, you'll notice how this area is a lot thicker than this area. Any guesses to why? Or do they, when you pull them open, are they kind of like stacking in on yeah. each other? Yeah. 
Uh, so it just means that the one that's all the way out here, right? This one uh, is really this rail, like uh, is really meant for this first window, right? The first of the stack, right? That one can slide all the way over here, right? And the next one behind it would stop right about here. The next one after that would stop about here. The next one will stop over here. And then the final one will just stay there, right? It doesn't ever move. So this is how you, this is how the window works. You're sliding these panels over and over and over again. And you can, you can actually look up these sort of products uh, if you really want to. Uh, let's look at up Nana Wall System. So. That's the name uh, of this. It's a brand, right? Just like how Kleenex is a brand, right? Uh, so this is one type of nano wall. Like these are kind of like folding ones, but there are other ones that are sliding and so on as well. But you can kind of see like what's going on with these walls, right? Like they're on tracks and whatnot. The, the tracks right here are like singular. They, they don't have the same tr tracks as the one that we have. The ones when you're sliding, they can't really like, you know, they have to slide past each other. So you have like four or five tracks, right? But the ones that are here in these sort of nano walls, they're using one singular track because they're folding up, right? And obviously the architect did not want to fold it up, right? Uh, they want it to kind of stack. So if you look back at the curtain wall house, uh, like, let's see. Uh, let's see if there's the interior, this drawing, you can really start to see those are the tracks. They're actually kind of dangerous if you ask me, like if you like stepped in here in the wrong, like put, have the wrong footing, you're going to kind of fall because like there's so many, it's like a, it's like a series of train tracks right here, right? Um, so a little bit dangerous if you ask me, but it's, uh, you know, it is what it is, right? This segment is just like, so many pieces all right so if you were modeling that right you would probably want to make sure that you know you have all the rails they're all separate like the way that it's drawn here except there's probably going to be a larger block at the very end just so that you know when all the when all the pieces stack up uh right when all the pieces stack up uh they they should probably meet this block at the very end so it should look in my opinion, something closer to like this. The, the actual plan should look something like this, right? So when it's closed, all these pieces just kind of stack up right there. I actually think this is, I don't know. I think this is wrong, but that's just me. But hey, what am I to say, right? So anyways, this doesn't exist right here because there's no way it's like, it's joint like this. They're two separate walls, right? If you look at the drawings, you can see how, um, once again, you can see how there's two sets of tracks, right? There's one, uh, one set of walls that open to this side and then another set of walls that opens up to this side. So there's two sets. The, the, the corner here is never really joined, right? So when you look back at this, it's like, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, so once again, it should look probably something like this, but one of these is going to be pushed a little further down so, so that it doesn't, you know, um, so that there's not this little opening on the corner, right? And then you come back and look at this. You see how now it's staggered and not stacked, right? So there's a real issue in this drawing. What I mean by staggered is if I draw a line like straight across, you see how you know, it's like it jumps off the line, comes back to the line, jumps off the line, comes back down to the line, right? So that will never actually stack, right? So you now you already know that this is all bogus on this side. This underside is all bogus, right? In terms of drawing, uh, it's probably it's more accurate if you just follow this like method right here. Right. So that's an idiosyncrasy that you'll find and you'll notice these things by like looking at photos. Uh, so you know that, you know, once again, this is a student drawn plan, right? You'll know right away that, hey, they 
we're only able to see so much, right? I'm not discrediting them in that particular way because once again, they are students, right? And I'm sure that if I asked you guys to draw a plan, you'd probably make the same mistake. But that's the whole idea, right? Like to see, uh, to observe and then compare, right? And see how you can improve, right? I'm sure I would make mistakes too if I drew this the first time just because like, I just don't know the house, right? So how can you observe and continue to do so? Uh, the other thing that's really, really weird is like they never enclose this area. Um, once again, there's no windows right here, right? Like a, there's no glass right here on the upper floor as well. But there's also no glass right here. So you're just like, what the heck is happening here? Do I just kind of, you know, like what is this area right behind this, right? But it's actually an enclosure if you look carefully at the, once again, at the drawings. If you look, if you're able to see the back side uh let's see let's see if they even have any images of the backside well not this guy uh let's see i really don't want to show the actual model because i you know what uh can't see it from this angle you know what uh i don't we can go there. We can actually just go there. Yeah. And because it's a physical building, you can actually look around and see. Whoa. Am I, am I in the wrong place? <laughs> Did they demolish the building? I'm so confused. Hold on. I'm one block over. There we go. All right, so you can kind of see it, right? Uh, no, you can't. You can't see it. Uh, there's no way to see it, but there's a piece of glass right here, uh, right in this location. But since we're already here, you can kind of see this is glass, that's glass, and if you zoom in, there is a corner. There is a corner right here, right? And then you'll also see in the stairs, there's glass, glass, vertical slit right here little separation between the upper and lower like stairs, right? A little separation right there. Yeah. Uh, so little details, but unfortunately you can't see the piece of glass that's right here, but that's how they were able to enclose it. Uh, uh, let's see what else. On the other side, you should be able to, yeah, so unfortunately, this piece does not exist in the plan because this was added much, much later. You can tell it's added much later because it's not even the same color or the same material palette choice, right? And then if you look on this side, you'll see that solid wall I was talking about, right? This is supposed, in the drawing, it's a bookcase, but here it's a solid wall, okay? Okay. Uh, do you guys have any other questions for me regarding this building? Uh, do you want to see what I would have modeled? All right. I just circle around so you guys can see it. Um, so let me hide the CAD drawings. For one, added some, you know, like surroundings so that when you do render it, it's not in the empty site, right? Not by itself. So these aren't super accurate either. They're just like, you know, go to the Google Maps, uh, take a screenshot of the of the area, and you can tell that I'm not being super careful either. Like this building right here is like kind of like a you know a wedge, and then you can see how hey, I don't have that. I just have this right. Um, so you know, uh, I do. I, well, this building used to be like this. Used to be rectangular, and then it was rebuilt to be something like this. So the original plans had, had a rectangular building. So all I did was basically found like a base and just put it in. And so I have some buildings in the settings, right? And you can kind of see how there's, you know, I put in some windows, I kind of enclose this area, like, you know, like the way that you should. Uh, and that's about it in terms of like, just making sure Right. Oh, and you can see that this is a mistake. Uh, let's scale this back a little bit. 
it is glass. It's just that it's uh, I, I didn't put a color on it. But so if I go to render mode, you'll see you'll actually see that it's glass and everything. Hopefully, it actually renders there. And I did actually model the wood deck just so that there is some some color. And Carla, if you were asking me, uh, yes, I did kind of. You can kind of see what I did with the kitchen. You don't have to do the kitchen, but I, I did it because you know it just looks nice. Uh, sometimes I'll do stuff like that, right? Uh, I'll do thing. I'll just make things, just model something so it looks like it has something there. Bookcases modeled in there, all the doors and whatnot. Uh, so every semester I model this building, so that's why I got a little better at it. So I'm not expecting all you guys to do the same thing. Right. Uh, this is an observation. I don't know if it's correct or not, but there's probably railings up here um, uh, because you know when you open the windows, people are gonna fall right off, right? So there would be some railings right there, uh, or maybe there is, uh, and that just didn't pay attention to it, right? Um, oh yeah, there is a railing right there. See, there's a railing right there. Uh, I think it stops right here because like all the windows stack over here. So uh, this last piece, you don't actually need a railing, but that's just my guess. And if you look carefully at the railing, the top one is a bar, the bottom one is kind of like a wire or a pipe because it really is just a wire. Uh, let's see, you can barely see them. It's like fin fin wires, right? Uh, if you go to the actual site itself, right, you'll see, you'll, you'll actually look at the, that's, that's an interesting, that's an interesting corner right there. They might have replaced it once or whatever, but here's your wires, right? Tension wires, and here, this is like, just like a thickened wire to create that corner. Because you can't really tension something that doesn't exist right there, right? If you tension this piece right now, right? If you make it out of the same material, uh, so this material is able to stay straight because you're pulling on both sides, right? Uh, but this thing right here, if you pull on both sides, you'll get something like that instead, right? You won't actually get this corner. So that's why they changed the material, which is why it's kind of like, I don't know if they fought it through too well. Right, they wanted not to have this corner piece right here. It's just kind of make sure that this, oops. So just so that you, they can make sure that this corner remains like kind of like free floating, no columns, right? That was the whole goal. But without that column right there, you can see how, you can see how like, well, they have to change out this material, right? Just so that they can get this piece to round off. And that's kind of funny just because like, for me, when I look at it, like that draws way more attention, the change in material than like putting in a vertical piece right here. But I could be wrong, right? You know, uh, that's just a personal aesthetics choice. So anyways, so that's, uh, that's what it looks like here for me, like just using the kind of wires to do that corner. I didn't, I did not model it with thicker material here, but that's because, you know, I actually well, probably didn't even model the right number of these wires because you look back at it, it's like three, right? And I have like five of them right here, uh, which is way more safe because if you think about it, um, if you had a kid in this house, they're going to fall right off <laughs> and climb right through the, the uh, climb right through this right here. So uh, the, there, there is actually a dimension you need to use uh, when you're dealing with uh, ra uh, railings and what's the maximum distance you have. I think like three inches or something like that uh, is the maximum dimension you can have. So that the three to four, I forgot what it was. Uh, it's so that the baby's head cannot be, fit, cannot fit through it, right? Something like that. <laughs> Okay, so that's my model right there. Uh, a lot of people do ask about like what happens in this area. And if you kind of just look carefully, I might 
let me turn off the neighborhood buildings. They're kind of getting in the way right now. You'll see how like the stairs actually go through this like, uh, I guess kidney beam shape, uh, or this is a, I don't know, boot shape or whatever you want to call it. It does cut right through it. So that it allows, allows this to exist, allows the stairs to kind of go through. So I'm guessing this was a storage area, right? They could keep all their stuff down here. Um, okay, so that's what it looks like. And how does my stairs look? Probably the same uh, as Layla's, right? Uh, my door's locked, so let's hide this. So I have, I did multiple steps instead of one. I just did, just divided them up into smaller steps and then come down, have a little landing door and then the landing outside. Yeah. Okay. Any question? Any any questions about this house structure and whatnot? Now that you see the entire set, the now that you see the entire thing assembled, do you have any questions about it? Okay, no questions. All right. So how about this? When we come back, uh, we I will show you guys how I would render this. I mean, this is already pretty good as a, you know, this in render mode, put in some materials, right? You can kind of see how I, uh, I, I made materials for everything, but I didn't actually give it a material, right? I made, this, they're all kind of like generic materials for like every layer. So it's, I, have, I have materials for every single thing. Uh, you'll see why I did that uh, after we come back from break. So when we come back from break, what I'll do is I will hop into, uh, I'll, I'll link this to Twin Motion. I'll show you guys how I deal with it. Okay. Uh, and if you really want to like try Twin Motion, uh, it is free for students. You can, uh, you can actually start looking for it. Like Twin Motion 2021. Uh, and what you'll end up what you'll end up going to is Unreal Engine, right? Because Twin Motion is part of uh, uses Unreal Engine and is part of Epic Games, uh, the gaming software that makes you know that makes the Unreal Engine, right? And people have been using uh, gaming engines to produce animations and renderings, right? So I wanted to kind of show you guys how you would approach that. So you should be able to do stuff like this uh, in Twin Motion if you really wanted to, yeah. Uh, and you can, well, once you sign, uh, once you sign up for it, like get started now, you'll download this uh, education one, right? Twin Motion for Education. Uh, you can download the launcher, open the launcher, download um, all this, and when it asks you to log in, right? You just use your mail.ccs.edu address and it's basically free for students uh and which is really nice i think i don't know too many rendering software companies that allow students to just like use it right all right uh let's uh, come back in 15 minutes at 10 30 and then i'll jump into twin motion for a second all right see you guys soon So we can see it. So here's the here's Rhino kind of like all set up, ready to go, right? Notice how like every material that I am using has, or every layer that I'm using has a different uh, has a different uh, material applied to it. They're kind of generic. If you click on the material, you'll see what I mean. It's just you know something curtain, right? Like right now I have plaster on it, right? You know, curtains aren't supposed to be plaster, but I have that on there. And then uh, on the wood layer is, you know, it's, it's called wood, but it's also plaster as well, right? Nothing sp special. So uh, when you go to uh, this page, uh, let's see, 
when you go to introduction to twin motion you'll see how like i have some things like links here that you can click on for example this one right here will get you to to the link that i just showed you get started right so you can download it and whatnot uh, but also there's this other thing that I usually install, which is the direct link plugin for Rhino. So you can basically send stuff from Rhino to Twin Motion without having to do the, the normal import process. So here, direct link, you'll see how Twin Motion works with Archicad, Revit, uh, well, Datasmith link for Revit. Uh, I don't know what that is. Direct link for SketchUp, Rhino, right? And I don't know what a rec CAD is, but you can see how like uh, you, it, Twin Motion supports all these softwares, right? These are not the only softwares that you can import from, but directly from one software to another, uh, there's something for it. So here, uh, direct link for Rhino. And once you have installed this, along with Twin Motion, the software itself, uh, Twin Motion, the software itself is pretty big, almost like 20. I think it's 20 gigabytes, something like that. It's huge. Uh, it takes forever for you to download. You're, I'm not expecting all you guys to use this, right? I'm just showing it to you guys so you have some place to go if you want to render it to this level. Uh, and it's pretty easy to, to use it once you have learned how to, how to do so. So once you install the direct link, you'll see a little guy up here at the very top uh, of your menu bar, Twinmotion 2020. Uh, I have 2021 installed as well, so uh, I'm going to like, uh, you can actually kind of choose which one you want to load it in. So the first thing you do when you uh, open this up is don't hit synchronization because that will just bring up Twin Motion, right? So go to like options and you'll see a couple of these things. Uh, I By default, it wants the, it wants here, let me reset to factory. This is what you get by default, right? Merge by materials, best performance. I do not merge this. I never ever merge anything because I want to keep my layers. You know, I spent all that time making these layers. Why would I like merge the merge anything, right? So I always kind of like just no merge and just leave it alone, right? Let these behave the way it behaves. I do want to use twin motion materials. Uh, this is fine. Like, if like your geometry is very, very curved, you can actually you know, set this to be higher and whatnot, right? So if you're model, modeling something very small, like a chess piece, you might wanna like, you know, go to a higher resolution. All this is really not, uh, okay. Um, this is the one that I normally uncheck. Exclude objects smaller than 1.9 inches. Your railings are like a quarter of an inch thick, so I don't want to exclude something like that. So I'll just leave this unchecked. And lastly, what are you connecting to? So I have both 2020 uh, and 2021 installed. So I'm just going to connect to 2021. And I'll hit OK. Uh, once I've done that, I can now just go to Twin Motion and hit Synchronize. And what you'll see is it'll take everything that's shown. You know, like I didn't hide anything except for the CAD file and the cage for my curtain. Right, everything else is revealed, right? Including the two sets of curtains right here, two sets of like the walls, like the sliding glass walls. I left them all turned on, right? All the layers. And I'm just gonna synchronize with Twin Motion. You'll see how it tries to connect with Twin Motion. Twin Motion opens up. Uh, and we'll get in the, it'll start its pro process of importing to emotion. So for me, sometimes when I first start up to emotion, the first time it sometimes crashes and then I have to do it a second time and it's okay. But uh, this time is perfectly fine. And the first thing that happens is do you link it to a existing project, assuming that you've worked on this previously, which you have not, right? Uh, you wouldn't select existing project. You'll just go with new project. Now, if you have worked on a twin, you've already linked your twin motion file to your Rhino file and you made some changes in your Rhino, you want to cl click on the existing project and just kind of like overwrite the import. And what I'll do is I'll keep all the materials that you have already changed in twin motion, uh, but import the new geometry and like apply the same materials. 
So just start off a new project, hit OK, and you'll see how it brings in this geometry into this virtual environment. Um, Home motion is kind of this really simple like uh, software where there's only so many things you can do, but it just makes everything look really good quickly, right? So your navigation is up here. Uh, you can change it uh, a little bit. Or So right now the right click is to look around, right? So here's right clicking and then like dragging around. So it's just kind of, in some ways, it's kind of like Rhino, right? Uh, there are some differences. Uh, you know, Rhino uses the right click to orbit, right? Uh, but here, the middle mouse click is to orbit, right? So whereas the right, the right button is actually to look around, you stay still. The middle mouse click and drag is to like orbit. So think of SketchUp. <laughs> it's actually closer to SketchUp, and you can change this. Uh, you know, you can go under this gear box and say, "Hey, I wanted to behave more like Rhino." So if I go to Rhino right clicking well, it's still the same like it still looks around but if you hold down alt and then uh, yeah if you hold down alt and right click you're now like orbiting so i i don't really change it i leave it on like sketchup because like i'm more used to i'm more used to twin motion in sketchup uh, but there is a couple of things that, that are different for example the wasd keys if you play a lot of first person shooting video games, you'll know what those do, right? Uh, if you hit D, you strafe or like take a step to your right, right? If you uh, hit A, you're taking a step to your left, right? If you hit W, you're moving forward. S, you're moving backwards, right? Now you hold down shift and when you do that, you're running forward, you know, like all that stuff is the same as a video game, right? So let's just go down to the ground for a second and then test that. Uh, there is a magic button that allows you to drop down on the ground. It's called M. So if I click M right now, I'm like on the ground, right? And then you'll hear when I'm, let me see if I can share my sound as well. You'll actually hear it. I have the, I have the ground kind of like engaged. You hear that? It's like somebody walking, right? So if I, uh, you know, uh, if I hit M again, I'm allowed to fly, you know, like up and down, right? Uh, Q and E are like the, oh, the other like buttons, like Q is to go fly up, E is to fly down, that sort of thing. When you're, when you have the magic button like pressed, like M, you cannot go through walls. But if you click it a second time, you're allowed to fly and you're allowed to go through walls. Okay. So that's something like really kind of simple, just to let you know for navigation. And there's speed one to four, right? If you do one, um, you'll see that I'm crawling, kind of crawling speed, right? If I do four, uh, I'm going like rocket speed, right? So I don't know, like you want to kind of gauge how fast you want to go uh, to kind of like allow you to kind of move around. I usually have two on uh, when I'm doing buildings, when I'm inside the building, I have one on. And if I'm like doing an entire city block, I might have three on. And if I'm doing an entire like mountainside, I might have four on, right? Just so that I can get to different places really quickly, right? So the different speeds. Yeah, so general navigation, pretty simple. Uh, it will take some time to get used to. So I, I don't get rid of this. I just kind of leave this up here. Now, I think as students, I don't think you have the ability to use this push to cloud thing, but you're able to like upload your stuff to the cloud and let the cloud render, do the rendering and whatnot. Uh, but the motion in general is pretty quick. Like if I wanted to make a rendering right now, like of this, like it looks like this, right? Uh, it'll probably take like a second or something like that. Right. If I want to add materials and do this, it'll take a second. Uh, uh, the longest render I've ever had to do in Twin Motion was like a minute or two. Uh, for some people, it might be a little longer just because you know um, you might have slower computers. But Twin Motion generally is pretty quick because it's not actually ray tracing light. It already has certain properties to fake the way the light behaves. Um, like a video game, you never, you don't see people loading like forever on a video game, right? They want to maintain, you know, at least 60 frames a second so that you can be entertained, right? 
if it's too laggy, uh, then you can't play a video game, right? Uh, so they kind of like don't really use ray tracing. They uh, they have certain uh, algorithms they've written and rendering engines to kind of like deal with uh, how light uh, bounces off of things. So let's talk a little bit about interface, right? So on the left, there's a little button, triangle button right here. On the right, there's also a triangle button, right? So if you click on these, you'll see additional information hidden in here. On the right side is a whole bunch of stuff to kind of add to your model. For example, materials, lights, characters. Uh, not that you'll be, you guys will be doing characters, but like you can, you can actually add a lot of different types of people in here, and they're animated. You know, like I'll just put so in here for a second. Uh, Right, and then you'll see she's on the phone. Well, actually, she's doing her lipsticks. <laughs> okay, uh, and then if you click on her, she's got color palettes, right? So you can change up the color palettes, the poses, you know, dancing, uh, speaking, right, uh, walking. You probably don't want walking because she's just walking in place, and that's super weird when you see that in real life, right? So special. Uh, here she's singing karaoke, right? Uh, but like under sit, you know, idle, right? There's multiple idle animations like phone, lipsticks, it's just standing right there. So different characters being reused. There's a couple. Of them. There's also a bunch of like non-animated people that are posed, right? Uh, doing all sorts of things, you know. Uh, Right, they're not moving, so those work better if you're doing a render. Whereas the animated people are better if you're doing like an animation, like a fly through animation. Right? Uh, I'm gonna take them away, <laughs> but there's also a bunch of other really cool stuff hidden inside here. There's groups of people. Um, there's animals, not a lot. There's only one dog and one cat, as far as I remember. Felix and Gideon. That's it. <laughs> and then there's all these other things like objects. So you can put like particulates, like fire, smoke, you know, like in your model. Not that you want your building to be burning, but, you know, there's all these other things that are generally pretty hard to render, but they're here. They're, they're, available right so smoke right that you would have to photoshop that in but like here it's just a given right all right so this is how you drop stuff in you know uh add stuff if you will need to but probably not much because you've already got everything that you need already modeled uh but yeah you can put like vehicles generally really nice cars right Things like that. Okay, so on the, on this left side, it's all about adding stuff, right? Trees, whatnot, uh, cars. On the right side is the organization of your of your file, right? So if you kind of look in this, I'm gonna collapse all this. In this scene, let's go to let's go up to the sky. When you look down at this, in in here, there's basically just a ground and your model, your add-in model. The add-in is always like your import, whatever you have imported. So the ground is just this, you know, ground, right? Uh, you can get rid of it if you don't want it. Um, keep it if you like. You can change the material that's on the ground. That's all fine. But the add-in is the thing that I would kind of spend a little bit of time to kind of like, like close out all the stuff. You can kind of see how I have the neighborhood, right? Right here. Uh, you have the... You have the model, which you have the windows, roof, right? Does any of this look familiar to you? Right? Like any of this layer structure look familiar to you? Model, column. Is it, is it something that we, uh, from, from our file? It's basically the same layers, right? Um, see all the layers that's name with all the a's a wood deck a mullion a stairs right so you see how it's all the same stuff right 
So this is essentially just like your layer system right here, right? And the reason why it's in this particular order or the way that it's like kind of laid out is because I did not merge the materials, right? Like when you, if you, if you did this assignment, when you import it uh, and you just kind of use merge, right? Merge by material, you lose basically all of this structure that you've already set up. The reason why I want to keep this structure is because I have the ability to do this. So under curtains, where are you? Curtains right here. You see how I can do this, right? I can close, get rid of that layer, right? And then that's open, right? Uh, I can hit, you can open and close the layers right here. And then I can go to my uh, uh, windows. Uh, I think windows open. I think I have a windows closed somewhere. I uh, can't seem to find it. Um, Mullions open, glass open. Is this the other one? Where's my close? Oh, here, windows closed. So I'll just see how like, got two sets of them right here, right? So I just turn them off, right? And then I, I have both sets in the model and I can turn them on and off whenever I want. Um, you can actually do it as part of your as part of like different scenes too, right? You can set one scene to be, uh, to have them open and another scene where you have them close. So now this looks correct, right? Exactly what I want it to be. So let's just, you know, let's try to make a really interesting render of like, say this view right here, right? Something like that. So how would I go about this, right? Uh, well, this is where we talk about this final kind of tab right here. Right, like you would just kind of go to uh, media and then you would kind of set up an image and then you render. But, you know, if you render this right now, this doesn't look that good, right? Like it doesn't have materials, doesn't have anything. Uh, so you would actually take the time to, to kind of like replace all the materials and you just go over to the right and you find the right type of materials to replace it with, for example, if the wood looks kind of like not that great to you, right? You can go under wood and just find a different wood that works, right? Um, I don't know, like, I don't know if there's a good wood for me to use. This is fine, something like that. And if I don't, so this is where you change your scale of movement, right? If I don't like this patterning, I can change the scale of the patterning. So it's a little less, like a little less right, repetitive, right? Something like that. Change it until you like don't see the repetition, right? Uh, and you can also change the reflectivity, right? Do you want it really glossy or not? Uh, you, it's really hard to see, but you just look over here in the kind of dark area right there. Right, super reflective, not very reflective. You can, you can change it however you like. Uh, and you can also like, I'm just gonna grab mahogany and just put it onto my bookshelf, right? If I don't like the color, click on the color, change it to be brighter or something like that. Hit okay, and then it should be a little bit brighter. All right, so got some materials. Maybe I'll change the current material so it's a little less like solid. Um, so I'll go back to like maybe, uh, let's see, cloth. There's, I think there's cloth or leather or one of these things. So let's see. Fabric. There you go. Uh, let's see. Some of these are a little too extreme. So maybe I'll do this wool, wool fabric and I'll just put it on here. Whoa, that's a little too extreme. Maybe not fabric. This one that looks nice. Uh, and you can change the scale if it's too like, you know, make it finer, right? So you don't really see the texture. So got that on there. Just remember when I'm dragging materials on here, right? Uh, the materials are based on the layer structure of your file. Right, so if you already apply materials in Rhino, right, whatever you put in here, it's just gonna like take up the same material. So everything on a layer, right, you can't, you know, like everything that's on this layer is that material, right? So you don't, 
you can't just drag the material to wherever you want. It just replaces all of the material of that layer, right? So same for the, let's take the stone, right? Uh, and I'm gonna use, I don't know, like this brown limestone on this countertop right here, right? Or maybe beige limestone, right? Something like that, or even sage, right? <laughs> something like that to so match the windows, right? You can come back in here and kind of deal with this like railings and these mullions by dragging metal on there. So use carbon, I think. Well, that's cool. Uh, no, probably not. Uh, maybe I'll use brush aluminum on the this, on the frames, and then I'll change the color to something a little darker. Something like that. Glass is on there already. Uh, it just placed the one glass. Uh, it just placed a glass, a type of glass in there, but you can choose whatever type of glass that you want. There's so many, right? So you just go on the glass material, drag it, drop it in, and that's it. Okay, so now that we have our materials, ooh, I don't really like this carbon look. This carbon look is a little too, uh, how do I say it? It's a little too extreme. Uh, matte metal, change it to darker colors once again. That's probably going to be okay. All right, so I've got this right. Uh, now, like the settings around, I'm going to drop some asphalt on there on the ground, and then that, that'll be it. Let's see, man made uh, asphalt. Well, that asphalt looks really, really bad and this one also really bad but don't worry because you can change the scale okay so make it really small and now it looks kind of like the right type of asphalt right the color looks a little odd but uh you know just change it drop it a little bit and the buildings they're a little too bright so what i might do is i might actually apply like some sort of I don't know, airport tarmac, something like that. And then uh, might change up the color just a little bit. Well, color's probably fine. Change up the scale. Okay, the color's not right. Let's not use airport tarmac. Uh, let's see if there's something else. I wish there was just like a paint. Uh, you know, like, hey, let's just apply a paint or something like that. But I don't think there is. So. I might just go to concrete uh, and just put like a bare concrete on here and that's it. All right. And if I don't like the color, I can always just change it to make it a little darker. All right. So materials is done, ready to render, or are we? So let's just say a few like this, right? Now, Let's talk a little bit about these buttons down here. The first one's import, second one's uh, about, you know, like a little bit about like creating uh, paths for animations uh, for your characters. I don't think I wanna deal with any of this stuff. The only one I probably wanna change is just urban. Uh, like if you ever wanna grab stuff from like Tokyo and like populated in the background, you can come here and grab it. Uh, but I don't think you need that for this project. This is all you need, but you can grab buildings. Unfortunately, this is not the most useful thing in the world. The reason why I say that is that it doesn't include topography. So if you do anything in San Francisco, right? Like, you know that the buildings are on hills, right? Uh, so this is why I don't think this is that useful because it'll import the shape of the buildings, but they're all flat on the ground. And that doesn't really help you just because you know you'll have some things in the background uh, looking like it's a it's a it's a series of uh, like of a city right but if you don't actually have hills and whatnot it doesn't quite work so i would probably stay away from it for now uh, but you know obviously if you have nothing this is better than nothing right so we'll go on to the next one settings you can actually set your location so then you can get the right sun studies, right? Um, sometimes it takes a minute or two to load this map. Uh, I don't think it always loads for me. Uh, sometimes it just remains black, but you're able to like, it's just kind of pick where in the world you are. 
And unfortunately, right now it's just not it's not loading this map. Sometimes it, it's really quick. And the map doesn't show, but I can still click on Tokyo and you see how the lighting changed, right? Uh, I can change it to San Francisco. And you'll see how the lighting changed again, right? Um, it's actually locating it. So because on different parts of the planet, the way that you see the sun, the swing of the sun is different. So it's actually changing that. So for now, I'm just going to put Tokyo. Tokyo. And as far as I know, north is up facing this way toward these buildings over here. I think that's what it is. So I'm going to make sure that my north is offset to the right direction, like something like this. And now I can kind of play around with the time, right? You can see morning, afternoon, and then late at night, right? So like, I generally like the, I don't know, I like to like kind of take photos, uh, you know, as a photographer, you want to take photos during like, they call that the golden hour and the blue hour, right? So if you take things that during the blue hour, uh, you you know, everything will be a little bit dark. Like this is the blue hour, like right here, like right as the sun is setting and then the hour after. But then this is too dark, right? So if you had the foresight to kind of deal with this, you might actually like come in here, pop a couple of lights uh, in the right locations, right? So for me, my, you know, like this might actually be helpful. Create a couple of lights, right? Uh, but, you know, you don't have to because, uh, it's not necessary that you need to model it at night. It's, you know, just, just something that it has the best lighting, like right as the sun sets, right? Right as the sun sets. Uh, but, you know, you don't have to, once again, you do not have to, it's not a requirement for you to render. Uh, it's not a requirement for you guys to render, but you can, okay? So let's see how, like how that looks. Uh, you might actually make one more below. So I'm making lights, and dragging them using the, the little arrows. Oops. Can't actually see that light that's behind. Uh, let's see. Let me see if I can find that light again. This light. Let's pull it out. So when you add things, you'll start to realize that it's adding it to this list as well, right? This list, these layers, right? Every element you add is going to show up in, in this particular like list right here. And you can put folders, hide things, and whatnot. But let's just say you do something like this, right? It's always been very difficult for people to make uh, night renderings, but like now it's like pretty easy. If you kind of ask me, right? This is generally pretty easy. Uh, obviously, you're. Your surrounding isn't lit very well, so you know I can create one more. I can create one more light. When you're dragging, if you hold down Shift, you can actually like create a duplicate. Uh, I'm gonna do copy instead this time. And here I can uh, I'm turn off the shadows and then change, increase the radius just a little bit so that there is a little bit of light, like in this area. So it just looks like a street light or something like that, right? just a small light in this, this area. So it's not perfectly dark. All right. And if I still don't like this, you know, like uh, the time, I can always like change it back to like something like sunset, right? Or daytime or whatever. The whole idea is that there is, there is something, there's something lit inside the building. So it's not pitch black, right? So change a month, background. For my background, I'm just going to remove it completely so it has nothing for now. But you can put it into like the waterfront or, you know, like do like something else. This isn't a great selection. It's just something to use as a background, right? So it doesn't look super empty. But I, I generally just put none because I already know this is a rendering. So, so far we went for location. We can play with weather if you like. Uh, Weather is kind of a fun one because you can go from sunny to like pouring rain. Right? You can see the rain that's on the ground. That's pretty quick. 
and also with season. So if it's, you know, winter, right? Snowing, right? That sort of thing. You can do these sort of really simple touches. Uh, but let's just keep it kind of cl little clouds uh, during sunny season or something like that. Um, if you had trees in here, you can actually affect what season the trees are, right? In the fall, the trees are yellow. In the you know, spring, the trees are just growing out, right? In the winter, the trees are bare, uh, or at least the deciduous trees are. The conifers aren't. So actually, you know what? Maybe I'll add one tree so that you can see that effect. Um, let's add like a Japanese, well, I don't know, is there a maple in here? Uh, well, sweet cherry tree. Let's add one tree in here, right? And then uh, I, you know, change the growth a little bit, right? And then you can see the se seasons. Right, so yeah, uh, you know, that's kind of nice, uh, at least for me, because like, I don't have to worry about like, uh, whether or not the trees look correct or not. So that's always been nice. Right. So this has all just been weather, right? Uh, for some people, you can actually play around with smog, right? So then it kind of gets rid of that edge at the very end. Uh, and it looks like it's like you can't see clear into the sky. I, I generally leave a little bit of it on so that like the edge in the background kind of disappears. So I just leave, leave smog really high up. Um, I don't think you guys will need this, but in some projects, you can turn on the ocean and then you're actually in the water, right? Think about global warming. This might actually be a new reality, uh, right? So turning off the ocean. Um, and let's see, let's keep going. So we've gone for location where lighting, this is just like your standard camera stuff. Do you want it to be brighter? Or do you want it to be darker? Right. This is like the stuff that you do with filters, right. On Instagram. Do you want it, do you want it to be more blue? Do you want it to be more sunset colors? Right. That sort of thing. Right. So, so kind of things for you to play around with. Uh, I wouldn't mess too much with all these settings just kind of leave it how it is because it's already pretty automatic last one's camera now camera is important to me because i i do have a lot of experience photographing things so i think camera is helpful at least for me to understand what you can do to make something look nice so first of all this field of view is the angle right do you want it super wide angle do you want it to be telephoto right right so unfortunately, this is field of view rather than like the standard photography, um, you know, millimeter, 35 millimeter uh, film. Uh, so field of view, like the human eye is probably generally around 90 to like a little plus, right? You can actually see up to like almost 100, like 80 degrees, but in the peripherals, you don't really see any details, right? So generally the details that you see are all within the 90 degree to 100 degree like right in front of you, right? So that's why it's generally at 90 degrees, but you know, if you want it wider or narrower, you can choose that. Uh, I, I just kind of keep it around 90 to 100 and something, 100 degrees or something like that. Um, you can stay away from depth of field. That's just like, if you want to take like a photograph, um, you know, here, let me add one person in here and that way you'll, uh, let's see. Let's do Frank, put Frank right here, have Frank face us so that um, we can actually see him. And let's drop down to Frank's level, like right here. So depth of field is kind of interesting because if you turn it off, everything is sharp. If I turn it on and I hit more, I get to choose where the focus is. If I focus on him and I Oh, hold on. This is fine. Uh, let's see. It's not quite working. Huh. Oh, there it is. It's kind of working, but not really. No. I think I know why. It doesn't work well in wide angle. So what I'll do is I'll back up 
back up, back up, back up, back up. I'll move Frank a little closer to me. Uh, this is the same with photography. If you don't have enough distance between you, your subject, uh, and the field of view you're using, you can't actually show depth of field. So in photography, uh, if you use narrow lens, right, like something like this, you can actually start to stimulate like, like blur, right? You can stimulate like that depth, right? So here I can focus on him and you'll see how the building's starting to blur out a little bit more. And the further back I move, right? The further distance I create between this, this subject, the person. I mean, this is probably not a, not a good lecture to have about like photography, but like the more I focus on the person, Right. And the more I kind of zoom in, you see how like the background starts to blur up and he becomes clear. And if I focus on the, the building, he becomes blurred. So that's basically depth of field, but I don't really want to use it. Like I want you guys to kind of avoid this because, uh, you know, if you don't know what you're doing with depth of field, it's totally useless. You're going to be like, oh, it doesn't do anything. Like it either blurs everything or it doesn't. And that's because the field of view is too wide and it's very hard to it's generally pretty hard to use this if you don't like know what you're doing or if you're not using this like kind of more narrow view of you right you'll never actually be able to blur out your your subjects and your background right and you probably don't want that in architecture in architecture photos you always want everything to be sharp <laughs> that's not a that's not a joke um, when you go, if you do a lot of real estate photography, they don't want anything to be blurred. They want to see everything sharp, clear inside the house, outside the house, everything. Right. So you'll never actually see that sort of like death. Right. Uh, so I just leave this alone just because that's not what you want to do. However, you know, if you want to play with it, you can. This one, I will always leave on parallelism. Just turn these three point perspectives to two. Right. See how like all your two point perspective just looks really clean all of a sudden. Right. Turn it off. All your perspective lines are leaning when you're looking up, when you're looking down, it's leaning down. And then your client's going to ask you, hey, is that column really leaning or is it the camera? Right. Because they can't tell. They can't tell if it's if it's a wide angle distortion or if the wall or you know, the column is actually leaning. So you just turn on parallelism and what you end up with is a two point perspective. And in the two point perspective, anything that's vertical always remains straight, right? Okay, so we've got all this in here, vignetting, all this stuff, good. Uh, camera's set, and uh, now we can just finally go to media. Uh, you could have gone to media first and like exported something, uh, but I wanted to kind of walk you guys through like some of these like uh, steps to creating something that looks presentable. Uh, so generally, a lot of students when they first like use Twin Motion, they go to export and they try to export something, right? And they're just like, I don't know how to export anything. There's nothing to export. I can't export an image, panorama video, whatever, right? There's nothing to click. All this stuff is grayed out. And I made the same mistake when I was first using this too. Right. And that's because the way that twin motion works is that you have to create a scene before it lets you export a scene. So you click on image, create an image, and now you have a scene. And in this scene, uh, you'll realize that you don't have access to settings anymore because the settings is actually under more right here. So your location, weather, lighting, camera, there's one additional thing, format. If you want to change the, the size, right, size of your image, uh, I generally just leave it as is and keep call it a day. But if I wanted to modify the, you know, the look of this a little bit more, I can go under more, right? Now, I wouldn't want to do that right now. I'm just going to like kind of do one from the backside real quick like this, right? Uh, here's a backside rendering like this. I'll add another image and, you know, I'll hit more just so that I can change out the the, the time of the day, right? Maybe I want this to be kind of like this in the morning, right? Something like that. Instead, uh, not June, let's do, ooh, that's pretty sexy with the moon in the background, uh, large moon in August. 
uh, late at night. So you can see how like now I have two different images, one from this side, uh, which is a sunset, this one in which is, you know, in the middle of the night, right? Uh, that's why you can't change the settings uh, when you're creating these scenes because each scene has their own particular set of settings like time, weather, and so on, right? I can make this so that it's actually raining if I wanted to, right? So uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, something like that. So it's kind of raining, right? So I can do stuff like that too. Uh, and now you can see how back in my images, I can have two very, very different mood look and so on. And when I go to export, uh, this all looks like a preview right now. And if you don't have a very good comp or you don't have a good graphics card, it generally looks something like this. Uh, so I'm in the, I'm in under edit, I'm under preferences. Uh, I think if you're modeling everything in Rhino, you don't have to change anything here. Like you could change it to inches instead of meters, right? The time format is 20, 12 hours versus 24. I, I'm used to using all this, but quality is the thing that, uh, that you will see that's very different. For most of you guys, if you're using a MacBook Air, looks like this, right? That's my, uh, that would be my scene. Right. Notice how like the tree looks, I don't know, kind of really bad. Right. Uh, the light is just like whatever. And then here in this night scene, you can see this fabric is glowing and all that other stuff. That's because it's on under preferences. It's the quality, the display quality is on low. Right. You can actually do this. I think you can do this on like, yeah, I've been I use my MacBook Air to be able to do a lot of these renderings. And you'll see how when you go to export, uh, and I'm exporting here, I can click on this and I can actually choose which image I want to export. I'll just export these two. And I can hit start export. I'm going to save them to my, uh, you know, rendering folder, which is the same. Uh, let's see, uh, right here. And you'll see how it doesn't take that long. It it'll take probably like, five, six seconds, but that's my computer. I don't know how long it's gonna take for yours. It doesn't take that long. So here's our preview, looks really bad. Uh, so if I go to back to my actual rendering itself, uh, let's see, assignment eight rendering. Here's the finished rendering, right? It goes back to high, it goes back to like high quality instead of you know, low quality. The display is low, but then the actual render is high. And you'll notice a whole lot of different details, right? Things like there's the cloth. You can actually see through the cloth but just, just a little bit, right? You can see the railings behind the cloth. Uh, you can see like stars in the sky, right? The moon and with clouds, the reflection of like, like water on the ground, right? You'll see all these little details which do not exist in your low preview. In your low preview, there's like barely anything here that you can see. The cloth doesn't even look like cloth, but that's because it's using low quality as a display. When you export it, it'll be on ultra whatever. So it's like playing a video game and getting to choose like how much computational power you want to use to display the world that you're in, right? Now, one thing I want to kind of just point out uh, that probably doesn't make sense to some of you guys is, you know, uh, you have for many of these lights, right? When you place them, you don't have to place any lights to be able to do any, what you're doing, but you, by default, shadows is off, right? So it look like this. You'll see how there's no shadows, right? And the reason reasoning for that is so that um, you can save on resources. The moment you click on shadows on, it's actually ray tracing uh, the light here to here and then through that to cast these shadows on, on the cloth, right? But if you turn off shadows, it's basically negating uh, any ray tracing. It's just kind of like taking an idea of, well, how far is this object from the light and it's going to brighten or dim dim the object, right? The material of the object. And that's it. 
And so the more like shadows on, the slower this file gets. Uh, and then you're back to ray tracing again, right? Ray tracing is decently slow, right? Uh, so that's pretty much it in terms of like just doing renderings. Um, pretty simple. And I, I know that I'm going really quickly. That's because I want to introduce this to you guys, whether or not you use it. I can, you know, like we can go through it in more detail over the next couple of classes if you have questions on how to do certain things. Uh, but in general, it's more this is this class is more like just like, hey, there's this wonderful tool out there where you can take your, you know, like take your like Rhino renderings to a whole nother level. And it, it's pretty simple, uh, at least to my understanding of it. Right. So I can kind of save this file. Uh, I'm going to save this to the same folder where I'm just using it. Uh, let's see, I'm going to call it uh, my twin motion materials applied. Uh, right. Now, let's, uh, let's close out of this for a second. All right. Close out of that. These are pretty good renderings. Right. Now, Let's just say, like, I come back in here. Ooh, it's a very different way to kind of can navigate because, like, Twin Motion and SketchUp not using the same navigation system. Let's just come back in here and let's just say, hey, I uh, really did not like this building here. Really wanted to um, change out this geometry, right? Like this. Or like I want to add something to my building and so on, right? Um, obviously, the best way to kind of do uh, deal with like modification to your building is to actually duplicate this entire. Uh, you know, like if you're gonna make modification to the building, you should probably just duplicate this entire layer and objects, right? You'll see duplicate lab layer sub layers. Yes, I want to duplicate all sub layers. Yes. And you'll see how you'll have a model copy, right? So I can close this one and now I can mess with this copy version however I like. So there's a really simple change in geometry. Oh, I guess that wasn't simple at all. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll do this. I'll, I'd open a roof hole, right? Or, hold on, not doing it very well. Let's just say, I cut a skylight in here, right? Something like that. Uh, so here's my poly surface. And I do this like Boolean, oh, sorry, Boolean indifference. Oops. So we got the skylight in here, right? Now, uh, I can I could definitely like import this again into like back into like twin motion, right? I can easily do that. Um, all you, all you got to do is make sure you have both. Like I want to just have redesign, uh, have both of these layers turned on, right? So both models are here, and what I can do is I can go back to twin motion, hit synchronize. And you'll see how it'll load up again. But this time, we did update this file. We updated the Rhino file, right? So, and we've already started a twin motion file. So instead of doing a new project, I'm going to go with existing project. Hit OK. And let's go look for our existing project, which is this guy twin motion materials apply. Hit OK, open. And you'll see how uh, it's going to synchronize our geometry. And you'll see how there's a lot of stuff in here. So I'm going to kind of go up into the air real quick. Look down. That's really cool. With the sunset and the waving dunes. Sorry. So let's go back here and look, look at this add-ins folder, right? We have. Uh, you know what? This is kind of messy. I don't know if we have the right thing. It might not have imported the right things. Uh, let's see. Huh. 
you know what? It might not have imported everything I want it to import. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't import the layer structure that I wanted to. Um, so this might be this might be something that they haven't fixed. This is a bug right now. So finish examples. Wait a minute. Huh. Uh, did you uh, did you save? Oh, there it is. Model right redesign now? right there. <laughs> uh, uh, George, I have a question. Should we save first before synchronizing or not? Yeah, you should. Uh, you should always save before you synchronize. But like here, it's it's in here, but it didn't create a folder for all the things that it already. So it didn't move the folders, right? These are objects that are in, uh, you know, like it's in this. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to SketchUp for a while. So you see how we have model and we have model design, right? And we don't have a folder called model in Twinmotion. That's what happened. There's no, like all these objects that you see right here should be in a, a layer called model. And it's just not there. But we do have model redesign, right? So you, what you ended up having to do is you have to like hide all these layers. Um, so I don't know, it's there, but like, it's uh, it doesn't have all the materials applied, uh, so you kind of like have to go back to square one and reapply new materials. However, because this guy still exists, right? Uh, you know, like your original layers, right? All your layers are here. You can always turn them back on, you know, if you want, and then turn off the redesign. So it's still there. All the all the materials that you need uh, are still there, um, and so. Kind of like spend the time to look for the right layers to turn on and off. Curtains, where is he? Where are the curtains? Yeah. See how the original, the original stuff is still here as well, and the redesign is right here, in this little folder, right. So what you want to do is you want to take all these guys, uh, create a new container. Uh, so I'm going to put a container like kind of out here. I'm going to call this, rename it to be the old design. And then I can put everything that's here, like all the things that I selected, drop it into old design, right? And now here's the old design, right? If I uncheck it and then check this, here's the new design, right? Uncheck it check it. Uh, one better way to kind of deal with the situation, maybe to like kind of do in Rhino, just create these two layers, right? Like these two layers and all this like organization before you import it into Twinmotion. That way you always have these kind of like, you know, the existing and the new. Uh, and then when you import it, you don't have to like mess around with the containers, right? You have to create new containers to put them in. You always just have one that you can turn on and off, right? Yeah. Um, all right. I know I went for a lot. I'm sure you guys will have plenty of questions. I'd be happy to answer any of them. Uh, if you were interested, you can actually do like simple, really simple things uh, like animation, phasing, panoramas. Videos is really interesting. It's actually pretty simple like this. It's like SketchUp. You add a couple of scenes, and then there's your animation, right? You just change the, how long you want this path to take, and that's it. And you can see how beautiful this lighting is, right, for this particular scene. OK. If you guys have any questions for me, because I do plan to kind of end it right around here, uh, just so that you guys can uh, continue working on your buildings. And also, I know all my 103 students are not working on this project right now. They're <laughs> kind of thinking about their 103 projects. Yeah. Any questions, comments, discoveries? 
once again, this is a tool that you you're, you don't have to use. I'm just showing it to you because it's it's a great little like uh, it's a great little like a plugin that works well with Rhino. So then you know you don't have to do all your ray tracing uh, in Rhino to try to play around with materials and whatnot. It's just so much easier in here, uh, and it's it's I think it you you take about like a third of the time that you normally would if you were doing it in a Rhino. Okay. If there's nothing else, then I will see you guys on Tuesday. So uh, it's we're heading.